Um, my name is Helen, and I'm here to talk about Wilson, as you know. I know we're all here to talk about dogs, but Wilson is a stuffed dog, a teddy, as they say in this country. So why would a middle-aged woman with not one but two jobs, I'm a journalist and an artist, stand up and talk about a teddy? Sorry, folks, but this is a self-help talk. I'm here to talk about neoteny, the retention by adults of traits previously only seen in juveniles, how to stay young, in other words. I believe we would all be happier and certainly more neotenous if we had a little guy like Wilson in our lives. Don't worry, there is a real dog. This is Wilson, a Cairn Terrier. He was named after the volleyball in the film Castaway, who was Tom Hanks's companion. The anthropologist Stephen Jay Gould calls neoteny the most important and neglected theme of life and evolution. So when people ask me, what is the point of this Wilson, I blind them with science. Back to Wilson. Within days of his arrival, we gave him names like Bish Geschmuckel, McFriendly, and Scroggins. This is Wilson at boarding school, top dog, as they say. I started to anthropomorphize him immediately, teaching him how to read and even play the piano. If he so much as sneezed, I was there to sketch, photograph, sculpt, or document it. They say dogs are like children. Well, they are and they're not. Wilson lived in a cage, for one. <laughs> Journalists have a way of twisting the facts to suit their thesis. I would like to think that when I saw the next Wilson, a jelly cat toy in a store window, that I was already neotenizing. With his floppy ears and soulful expression, Wilson was the perfect transitional object, defined as an object that offers children psychological support in unique situations. When I once forgot Wilson and had to call an Addison Lee to bring him to me at Heathrow, I realized he had also become an emotional support animal. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, look at any child playing with their teddy, and you will see a high degree of delusional behavior. We think it's sweet when a child talks to his teddy, but when an adult does, we recoil in horror. Transitional objects offer children security, but most important, they offer them endless opportunities for play. Then, suddenly, the party's over. Adult convention stipulates that Teddy stays at home while we get on with the business of being adult, whatever that means. Then what happens? We spend the rest of our lives trying to rediscover our inner child. I spent a week at the famous Hoffman Institute, the, the expensive psychological boot camp that most of West London has been to. And what were they there to learn? To play. Wilson could have taught them that for 14 pounds 50. Kurt Vonnegut said, we are here on earth to fart around. Adults think play is child's work. They should spend more time with their dogs. A dog who doesn't play doesn't develop. We spend hours stimulating our dogs with, with toys and with tricks because we know it makes them happier, more alert, more neotenous. The opposite of play is not work, it's depression. In his book, Play, author and psychiatrist Stuart Brown compares play to oxygen. It's all around us, yet mostly goes unnoticed or unappreciated until it is missing. Play is art, books, movies, music, comedy, flirting, mucking around with Wilson in airports and cafes. Play is purposeless, fun, and pleasurable. It permits us emotional discharge without too much risk. Is it any wonder that baby boomers are taking play classes? It's no coincidence that Wilson burst into my life at the time that he did, just when I was finding life a little bit less humorous 
and certainly less neotenous. There he was, willing me on to play. But I'm 55, not five. And in an adult world, Wilson's idea of play would definitely be considered borderline. <laughs> like all dogs, Wilson suffers from approval addiction. Like all terriers, he's got a hefty dose of oppositional defiance disorder, as do I. Like his namesake, Wilson suffers from what they call deaf in park syndrome. Don't they all? But unlike humans, Wilson intuitively knows the cure to all of his ailments. He always smells the roses. He lives by Friedrich Nietzsche's quotes, those who were seen dancing were thought to be insane by those who could not hear the music. He loved La La Land. <laughs> Wilson practices mindfulness, doga, and Pilates. He also knows that effort-driven rewards, the fancy name for using your hands, is an essential ingredient to happiness. This is Wilson painting. One theory banding around for the galloping rates of depression in the modern world is that we don't make things with our hands anymore. But making things, baking a pie, knitting, releases a rush of feel-good hormones called serotonin. NASA, in fact, will no longer hi hire anyone who can't prove he can work with his hands. Mucking around for no useful purpose whatsoever is how most of the world's best ideas came about. It's no accident that Nobel Peace Prize winners are 22 times more likely to also be artists. Einstein played the violin when he was having problems solving mathematical problems. I play with Wilson, both of them. I do worry that people think I'm mad. Uh, but then I take a leaf out of Wilson's book and think, so what? One in 11 Brits is on antidepressants. They take six weeks to kick in. It takes all of three seconds for me to think of something fun for Wilson to do. And by the time I've done, I'm done, I've forgotten what I was miserable about. Creativity is not the half hour mom allows you to mess up the kitchen. Creativity, play, makes us stop thinking or even cease to exist. I could sit back and wonder, am I really, really happy? Are my friends doing better than I am? Who's been invited to a party that I haven't? Or I could teach Wilson another dance move. <laughs> Wilson doesn't know the meaning of the word embarrassing. If a photo op demands that I lie on, the st on, my, on my stomach in the middle of the road, I do. Does anyone mind? Not really. Wilson brings out everyone's neoteny. Even at Kennedy Airport, where I asked the nice man at passport control to stamp Wilson's passport. Of course he has his own passport. He said, welcome to New York, Mr. Wilson. <laughs> I did get hauled into a side room in Damascus for trying to put Wilson through an x-ray machine. But apart from that, Wilson is always greeted with a big smile at border control. The defining word here is smile. A friend of mine recently said in front of a large group of women, what's the point of Wilson if he doesn't make any money? The women chimed in unison, because it's fun. Characteristics of neoteny include curiosity, wonder, joy, imagination, love, and play, all of which make us resilient. Growing up, says Professor Rhonda Beeman, who teaches neoteny, is growing old. Children laugh 300 times a day, adults three, if that. We say things like, grow up and don't be silly, unless we have permission to, like on Red Nose Day. Wilson, both Wilson, is the person slash dog I would like to be. He's never remotely concerned with what people think. And like all truly happy people or dogs, he makes everyone else happy too. His ego does not demand that he be on the top of the New York Times bestseller list, though maybe he should be. 
He never compares himself to others unless favorably. Instagram was the perfect vehicle for Wilson because what is the point of Instagram if not to show off how marvelous your life is? Speaking of um, showing off, that's the lovely Flora Beverly with 23,000 followers. Wilson now has followers in the skateboarding community. I don't think they realize that his mother is middle-aged. The moment I took Wilson, the teddy, out of the bag, the two became inseparable. Little Wilson is now Big Wilson's transitional object. As for my two sons, when Wilson was given his own column on the Notting Hill Post, they rolled their eyes. But guess who follows Wilson and likes and comments on every picture? Their friends. Then there's my husband, Charlie. One day, out of the blue, he asked if he could borrow Charlie. Uh, Wilson, sorry. <laughs> too many characters in this talk. As a good Englishman, my husband is not about to lie on the floor. He's far more devious than that. When no one's looking, he takes Wilson out of his briefcase at party political conferences, for example. In the case of Scottish politician Alex Salmon, no stealth photography was required. <laughs> Personally, I feel sorry for real dogs whose parents dress them up like clowns. Wilson, that's another story. Every day is an opportunity for self-expression, he thinks. He's had his ear pierced, he's had his ear braided, a Beyonce moment. <laughs> Wilson reminds me every day that art is supposed to be disruptive. <laughs> Sorry. How do I get this to start? Sorry, this is a video of Wilson being covered in chocolate. Okay. <laughs> The best part of this conceptual, spontaneous art project at Melt is that we got to eat it to set him free. People were very worried about this picture. Wilson loves to travel. In fact, he just returned from Kenya where he commissioned a sculpture in his likeness. These days, invitations are directed at Wilson rather than me. On holiday, he's dominated by other neotenous guests. A 60-year-old chairman recently built Wilson his own hut. Then he put up a hammock for him. I might be making a giant fool of myself, in itself a neotenous activity, if it weren't for the fact that more and more people aged 20 to 60 are asking to borrow Wilson. Dee Dee Johnson was a serious photographer until she met Wilson, that is. Wilson has become a conduit for other people's neoteny. He's been 3D printed by Artie Lobster, turned into a biscuit by the Biscuitiers, and sketched mid-flow by the artist Nicola Reed. I love how he's levitating there like a bee. When asked to pose in the nude by the artist Simone Sandelson, He happily obliged. What I love about this painting, she said, is that I can feel him like a presence. Whenever I work with a photographer, I sneak in a Wilson shoot. This was a fashion shoot that turned into a spontaneous interpretive dance session. Neotenist photographers like Natasha Przezinki rush through the business at hand to get to the fun part photographing Wilson on his toilet in preparation for my, I should say our, story on the famous Meyer Clinic, which by the way is about sitting on the toilet in Austria. <laughs> not knowing if they had a sense of humor or not, we snuck around at first, but by the end, the chief doctor, Stefan Domenic, announced in front of all the guests that Wilson is very good for one's health. 
He even brought in his own stuffed sheep to meet Wilson. <laughs> Wilson now commands a small army of other toys, many given to him by children who also neotenize on a regular basis. When traveling, I pack one suitcase for myself and another for them. By now, most of my friends accept that Wilson is part of my life. He's always invited wherever we're invited. But rather send, than send one of those boring, regifted Joe Malone candles that everybody sends, he makes elaborate thank you albums of himself, of course. So, he's made a lot of this. So, what is the point of Wilson? He's my therapy and my therapist. <laughs> he pushes me out of my comfort zone beyond anything I could have ever have imagined. I can Photoshop any 20-year-old under the table these days. I learned to skateboard thanks to Wilson. Most important, I learned to look, really, really look. It's amazing how expansive and neotenous the world is when you look at it from the perspective of a six-inch teddy. It's also a bit dangerous. My negotiation skills would shame any Turkish rug merchant. When I'm, with, when I'm with Wilson, I'm in it. That famous flow state that we're all meant to live by comes effortlessly, thanks to him. Adults can be silly too, sure, but only after a bottle of wine. I started a self-help book club. I must have 50 books on my shelves about happiness, all neatly underlined. But I know now that you can read, and you can chant, and you can kale smoothie as much as you like, but nothing changes a mood faster than taking out a stuffed dog and saying to him on a gray, cold, rainy morning, what should we do today, Wilson? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>